The diversity of reproductive strategy across animals is pretty remarkable, but it also breaks down into some simple variables. And the best way to do that is simply make a little column A, column B chart. So one of the variables concerns where these gametes meet. Either they meet in the environment surrounding the animals that are combining them, or they meet in some protected or interior body part of one of the involved individuals. So we can talk about external versus internal fertilization. So we could say up top here uh, for fertilization to be external or internal. Whereas, we can also talk about where the embryos develop. Uh, again, whether they develop somewhere out in the external environment or whether they develop in some protected or interior body part of one of the concerned individuals. And so that gives us a little crossbar here where we talk about development and whether it is also internal or external. And although you might think that external fertilization and external development have to go together and that internal fertilization and internal development have to go together, well, animals are a lot more interesting than that and every possible combination is observed. Certainly, I think that uh, external fertilization and external development are very, very common. Um, many people are familiar with this in the form of uh, many fish. So you have the female laying down a bed of ova and the male swimming above that and squirting over them a cloud of sperm and they develop right there in their little egg sacs, uh, never to enter an adult body cavity and so external and external. So we'll go ahead and uh, say salmon being an excellent example. Out of many, 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 many thousands of species. So we can talk about the uh, internal fertilization and internal development quite easily because that's what we do and it's what all known mammal species do with the exception of two. So here clearly there are many different anatomical arrangements involved. We have uh, this is when we have internal fertilization we're talking about genital interactions. When we talk about internal development we're talking about all sorts of organs. Now I will point out that the mammalian uterus is an exceptionally complex version of that tactic and you can have much simpler versions as well. So then here we have the situation uh, where things get a little bit strange from our perspective. Um, for example, external fertilization and internal development. So sperm and ova come together in the exterior of the contributing individual's bodies, therefore special genital anatomy is usually not involved. And then, however, they are picked up and secreted into a particular protected area. And this may not be literally inside a body cavity, but it is inside a protected portion in the personal space of the individual. It's also interesting that in this case, we now have the opportunity for either male parent or female parent to be the concerned individual who protects the developing young. This is where you have situations like certain frogs who use portions of the skin on their back toward this end, um, and certainly um, a variety of other animals with mouth pouches and uh, all sorts of fascinating things. That brings us to our fourth sector in my chart where internal fertilization is occurring but the development is external and again this is a tremendously familiar situation of uh, sperm and ova come together inside a duct of one of the individuals and then it gets packaged with a lot of nutrient and then gets set outside of the body so here is our familiar situation with birds and a variety of other egg-laying creatures, including those two species of mammal that I mentioned. 